So we now have our two basic uh, equations in place for the two waves. Well, actually, it's a single equation. Uh, we're looking at two waves, one on top of the other. And we're going to look at doing some basic uh, filtering in software. Uh, once again, using Excel to analyze this. I'm not going to go into any detail, really, in the algorithm I'm using for the low-pass and high-pass filters. Um, that's not kind of that's not what I was going with with this video series. Um, uh, just briefly go into, I played with a lot of different filters. Uh, Butterwil uh, the Butterworth filter was one of the ones I used quite a bit. Um, I couldn't quite get those to do what I wanted to. There's some, some tuning errors and some clipping issues that are really hard to work out. Um, it turns out it's not very accurate in uh, certain frequency ranges. I ultimately threw away everything I had found and uh, started over from scratch and came up with my own method. Uh, and this method is just based on simulating a uh, electronic circuit for filtering, uh, an RC circuit. And um, let's go ahead and just implement that in here and then show you how we can use Excel to analyze uh, the effectiveness of, of this particular filter. So let's go ahead and set off uh, a cutoff frequency. I'm just going to put something in here. Um, so the algorithm I'm using has two components to it. Uh, the first is to calculate the constant rate of change based on frequency. It's not actually a, a constant, it's, it's variable by frequency, but um, it's a piece that gets used in every sample. Um, and it's, it's based uh, entirely on the frequency. So I'm just going to set my Q constant here um, using the algorithm I have been using. And this is not the cleaned version, this is just a quick way to get an Excel. Um, you know, my sample right here, dollar sign, F dollar sign, T. And, oops, actually that is what I want. Times two, times L pi. So that's this constant is is affected entirely by uh, my cutoff frequency. So it's going to change with that value there. Otherwise, it's going to be constant. Um, and this algorithm does require that I know the last value. So I'm going to start by plugging in zero manually, and then apply the uh, the algorithm in the second sample. And this sample is is actually a pretty simple equation. I just need to um, know that it's going to be the previous sample, so C1. Plus now I need to calculate the rate of change, which is the uh, the difference of my input and the, the capacitor value times uh, the constant there. So um, it's going to be, let's just put this here. So I need uh, B2 minus C1. That's my uh, the difference. And the change rate is going to be the constant we calculated, which is going to be an absolute K2. Let's see. Make sure I have that entered the way I think I did. K2. Yep, that should work. So we're going to do the same trick we've been doing before. Let's copy that uh, equation down the line. C44101, enter, control D. And you will notice that the, uh, the graph that I have for that, that second plot, uh, has actually um, cut out the high frequency portion of the wave and left an out of phase, but the, uh, the lower frequency wave is in place there. So let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit higher so that it's not, you'll notice the level is lower. So if I bring it up to 4, uh, it's closer to the amplitude of the original wave. And you can still see that there are some pieces of the, uh, the high frequency wave in place. Um, as I get closer to the, the higher frequency, it's going to uh, be closer and closer to that form. Uh, once I get way over it, they're going to be just identical to each other. So you can see really briefly here, uh, pretty quickly, um, 
the effectiveness of this particular algorithm for uh, doing a low pass filtering. So let's go ahead and add high pass filtering to this. High pass is actually very similar uh, to the, the low pass. Uh, the difference uh, is if you actually look at the, the way uh, filters work in electronics, uh, you have two different uh, orientations for your capacitors. One passes the high frequency to ground and one passes the high frequency uh, into your ampl amplifying circuit. So what we've simulated here is uh, we're passing the high to ground. Uh, what we need to do is look at just the high frequency that doesn't uh, actually go into charging the capacitor. So what we're going to do is actually just look at the difference of the capacitor charge versus the input. Uh, so for this one I can actually start at zero because well when you really do this you won't be able to but for this example in Excel I can just take a look at the um, input which is B1 in this case minus the current value of my passer so that's C1 that gives me a difference. That's all you need for a high pass filter. So let's go ahead and get those values filled in so we can prove that. So let's go to D44101, press enter, control D to copy down, and we'll need to adjust the graph to represent the new thing. So we need to go to select data and include the D column in this graph. And I think I just deleted something I didn't intend to. Let me try that again. Select data. So I need to go to D. So we now have uh, the high pass, low pass superimposed on top of the. Um, the original signal. And now you'll notice that I have two frequencies of 4 and 40, and the cutoff frequency is set at 1. So you can see the uh, low pass, that's the red line, has a little bit of the lower signal, but very little of the high. And the high pass filter, which is the green, uh, shows pretty much the entire wave. Now, um, as we get our cutoff higher, let's go ahead and go up to 30. Um, what you're going to notice is our red, which was our high pass, is now getting closer to the original wave. And the high frequency uh, is showing up in the, um, in the green, which is our high pass. You'll notice that it is actually still has a little bit of the, the lower frequency wave, but mostly it's just high frequency. And as I go further up the road here, let's just go all the way up above it at 60, um, you're going to notice now my low pass is almost completely lined up with the original frequency, and my high pass has got very little left of the, um, of the low frequency uh, signal in there. And we'll actually have to go into higher frequencies to really see um, how well these are working, which we can simulate. But as you see, I go higher and higher. The, the fluctuation uh, in that uh, the high pass filter goes away, and it's just it's a reduced level now because we're above the uh, the, the cutoff frequency of the of the higher frequency wave. Let's see. I don't have very much time left in this recording, so I won't go into uh, looking at a smaller sample space. But um, we'll save that for the next video. Uh, so, uh, till then.